So, leaving Europe. Um, we have been seeing, I think, a lot of examples from Europe. Um, I will talk about urban deprivation, which is maybe an alien concept for the non-social scientists here in the room. So what I'm talking about is a multi-dimensional understanding of poverty. Um, typically, you see areas um, like this, um, like in Nairobi, Kibera, um, which is uh, normally called in the common language slums, informal settlements. So places where people are deprived from basic services, from um, um, ha um, have um, sort of adequate housing condition, but also a lot on environmental conditions. So it, a lot of things play together to make an area deprived. That's also what you see on the ground photos, like this massive waste accumulation on the ground. And we are trying to, uh, to have this challenge. We want to produce open data on the location of such areas, on their degree of deprivation, um, on their specific conditions, which is a challenge also coming back to the presentation of Karin in the morning about the do no harm principle. How you produce data without doing no harm, but producing data that are relevant to um, highlight issues, to call for action and bring people together. What we see is that um, this massive urbanization and um, what we're talking about is the majority of our future population. Just thinking about that 90% of the future population in Greece is pro projected or estimated to be happening in low mid-income cities and the majority in deprived urban areas. So we are talking about the majority of our, the future generation in which living conditions people are going to live. This is also reflected in the SDGs, like on SDG 11, on, on no poverty, and SDG 11 on sustainable cities as the first indicator on slums, informal settlements, and inadequate housing. And the challenges of monitoring these indicators. Um, presently, for example, on SDG 11, these are national estimates, which are, um, I shouldn't say this in a, in, a, in a public session, but close to, um, <clears throat> uh, rubbish, <laughs> because uh, they, are, they are basically estimates, there are a lot of politics behind, um, they are, um, and, and there are no spatial, uh, have to, not having spatial context, so you don't know where are this area uh, located in cities, you don't know, City X has so many um, slum population, there are national estimates which are simply brought down to, to the cities without understanding the local context. Your inhabitant is working very hard on trying and is very much eager to get earth observation methods in their SDG monitoring. Uh, we will have also now in February an um, expert meeting in trying to get earth observation more in the SDG 11 monitoring because they know that this data um, are not reflecting the local reality. Um, what is important about SDG 11 on slums and former settlements is that it's uh, using household level data and not area level understanding of deprivation, uh, which is a complex thing. I can talk a lot about it, but it's, I just want to make the sta statement that understanding besides the household deprivation, how a person is living in an environment uh, like being polluted, be having access, etc., to services is an important aspect of deprivation slash poverty, which we want to map and bring to the plate of um, discussion. What makes it complex to produce data on deprived urban areas is they vary. Like, I think it's, um, you might have the situation like glaciers might differ from place to place, but deprived urban areas uh, in city A vary massively in city B. Um, so making um, algorithms transferable from city A to B is very complex. Also within a city, if you so, see these examples, or just in one city, massive differences, and we want to basically map this, this, this diversity and also understand this diversity. Um, data gaps are massive, and also the example of um, um, don't do, do, do no harm. Um, um, algorithms are massively biased um, to the formal part of the city. For example, I would like to invite you look to Google um, open building data, go to a city, to the formal areas, building well captured. In the informal part, slums, deprived area, um, hardly, sometimes no building captures, not well captured, etc. So there are massive um, biases uh, towards the formal part of our world. 
What we see is data are really massively needed. They are needed in high temporal um, 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 granularity, meaning every one, two years, it, um, need, air, air is changed dramatically. Um, environmental conditions change dramatically. Um, linking to the do, do, do no harm principle. Um, so what we see is that data can have a massive impact. That's an example of an eviction which happened uh, last year in Nairobi. And by documenting this eviction, bringing it to the media, um, the eviction was actually stopped. We were working together with local community groups. Um, and um, this eviction was done by the government, but was not in, uh, illegal, actually. And bringing it to international media stopped the eviction process and gave the people the acknowledgement. Of course, it happened already to a massive scale, what you see here. So this area has been evicted. Um, but it gave them the option to, to claim um, that this election, eviction was illegal and to get compensation. But of course, um, we, we need data for various purposes. We need data for monitoring, for targeting policies, for improvement. And we also need to bring data to the uh, local level to, to help people to fight for their right for advocacy. Um, for, um, but also with the challenge, of course, how we make data available. Do we violate privacy? Do we actually do harm to communities if we map, if we make polygons of areas? Um, do we invite people to do evictions? Um, so that's a big challenge of thinking about how to make data available. An example of Earth observation models, which we have been producing with um, an ongoing effort um, um, and past efforts of slum map, is we, um, we are developing models to uh, predict um, the deprivation probability of areas and combining it with uh, bottom-up population estimates, because population estimates of areas are typically useless going to the global estimation models. Sometimes they don't predict even 5% of the population living in those areas, in these very high density areas. Um, we have been uh, together with some colleagues, also Serkan is part of it. Uh, um, so we had a previous uh, grant uh, from U UKRI to build um, a network and also to work on some pilot cities to build deprivation models, so conceptual building of models, but also to have some tryout cities of such models. Um, we have a recent um, started grant from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to really implement an ecosystem of data for urban deprivation and to think how um, how to develop a just and a fair model of uh, producing data, open data on urban deprivation. What was uh, done in the first part, we built a conceptual understanding how we bring um, open data together on urban deprivation from different aspects, from typically what is done by UN Habitat, from household level aspect, to an adding information on area level aspect, adding information about, for example, hazard, contamination, but also how areas are connected with the city, like on infrastructure, services, and governance connections with the city. What we do um, to uh, not violate privacy issues, we are using um, gridded models, um, like 100 meter by 100 meter grids. We have been building several data sets on CRIP as an experiment, to, um, to allow modelers to use our data and to build um, and to experiment with the models. And typically model outputs are deprivation models that show cities from the, uh, from the least to the worst deprived areas, which can be combined with population data sets um, to, uh, for example, to do SDG 11.1.1 monitoring. A similar experiment was done with colleagues in Sudan uh, with um, people from the government, but also from an NGO, bringing local stakeholders together to build a model in a very um, data scarce environment. In Khartoum, Sudan, you have hardly any good data sets. So we have been trying to build on openly available data sets, combining with some local data sets, um, gridding them that we could use them in our model, and to build a first deprivation model for the city of Khartoum with local actors and um, making data also openly available model outputs in a GeoNode, which is under construction, so it's 
um, you can visit the site and it's uh, basically there are more and more data will flow into this um, geo -not. Um So the recent um, endeavor which we have is building this open um, data system um, um, allowing modelers um, but also community groups um, and government actors to uh, to come together to share data in a fair way. Um, we will start with three cities in Africa, with Lagos and Kano in Nigeria. Kano, a very complicated city, which is in a, in a very conflict-prone uh, area of uh, northern Nigeria and Nairobi. Um, we will have a couple of expansion cities to test our model, our transferability, um, and yeah, what we are looking into the co-design of our platform in uh, participatory GI, uh, um, IE models, and what we bring together as stakeholders from local government, from, from community groups, um, to design those models. Um, that's in principle our first draft or of our envisioned model platform, and we are, I would be happy to get some feedback and input uh, for those who are interested in it. So what we are bringing together, and this makes it also complex, so we bring together Earth observation data, um, local data set, which have to be gridded because of, um, of, of um, yeah, the, um, um, let's say, data set from local governments, and they might not be able to share them without um, um, aggregating them. And citizens generate the data from local community groups, which we are working with in all the cities. Uh, we look into how to um, anonymize data um, and to produce predictive model about deprivation services which will be fed back to local actors um, and uh, be validated and improved on the local level. So that's in principle our plan. Uh, we will also look into further improving and, um, and um, um, scaling up, I mean, and transferability to other cities because in the end we want to predict not only this eight city or ten cities, but a large part of cities where we will also work on a related project where also Claudio is involved on an ESA funded project on uh, what we call IDEA Atlas, looking to um, informal settlements on using Earth observation data and particularly the focus on a free or low cost data set to support scalability. Um, and yeah, if you like to get, get involved, um, we are opening this call for community of practice, of modelers, people who are interested to use our model outputs. There's a first kickoff meeting soon that um, can be also joined online. Um, so you can simply go to our, um, our website and register for the uh, kickoff meeting. And a call for modelers who would like to be part of this um, part of this journey with us and help us to develop the models and bringing your inspiration and ideas to, uh, with us um, into the team would be great. A final thank also for on another thing which we didn't talk today about open, open education. Uh, we have been also developing open educational material, not for students, not for university students, but for community data collectors, people who have primary education level and, and we have been developing with groups in Nigeria and, um, and Kenya an open training curriculum uh, for community data collectors to profession professionalize the data collection at the community level um, because we need, see that the needs of um, enabling people to have data in their hands to, uh, to fight against eviction, to um, engage with governments and to, to, to put their claim onto the table. Thanks. Thank you very much, Monica, for this very nice presentation. So uh, if there are some questions, we can take one before the lunch break. Uh, Tom, yeah? Sorry, I have one yeah. <laughs> question. <laughs> uh, plan it's available for tropics uh, last six years, I don't know. It's up to three meters or something. It's up to three meters. Yeah, that's definitely a data set we will use uh, because, of course, there's this challenge that um, for a lot of the questions we have, um, of course, Sentinel, Sentinel data with 10 meter resolution are suboptimal. Mm. And uh, planet data would be a research option. Of course, we are also starting now downloading them uh, for many of the cities we are working on. Um, and we need to see 
whether they are they are sort of um, do the purpose what we are looking for. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much.